Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you in Berlin. Thank you very much for coming um, to the Networking Scientific Conference, Days of Ukraine in Berlin and Brandenburg. My name is Sofia Kotsuda, and I was assistant uh, professor, Dr. Teoharis Grigoriadis. Uh, please give applause to him. In organization of this event, as well as the, this event was also organized by the um, Deutsche Ukrainische Akademische Gesellschaft. And we are very thankful for this uh, support of the Gesellschaft, especially my thanks to uh, Dr. Oksana Zoymenicht and applause to her. Пані та панове, я рада вас вітати в Берліні, в Вільному університеті Берліні на конференції Дні України в Берліні та Бранденбурзі. А також я хочу привітати наш чат онлайн і запросити вас до дискусії, і щоб ви задавали питання в чаті, для нас дуже важливий ваш фідбек. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a couple of things to mention regarding the organization of our conference. Uh, would you please uh, hold the distance one and a half meters? Please wear FFP2 masks. I'm also uh, wanting to mention that you don't have to wear a mask if you are uh, staying on the place. And um, if you have any questions, please come to the registration desk and ask them. I will also ask you to switch off your phones. Our conference is being streamed through the website, and you all have signed the forms that uh, you are agreeing that your data will be given to, the, um, to us, to the conference organizers, so that we can use it uh, later on for the publication on the website of the Deutsche Ukrainische Akademische Gesellschaft and on the website of the Osteuropa Institute. Uh, it's my big pleasure to invite to the welcoming remarks Professor Dr. Teoharis Krikoriadis. Um, welcome, welcome to this fascinating event. I would like uh, from this uh, uh, position to also thank Sofia Kotsiuda and please one applause to her uh, for the wonderful cooperation. Uh, the Free University of Berlin and the German-Ukrainian Academic Society uh, welcome you to this event. Um, I would like to place here a special thanks to uh, Oksana Zoymenicht uh, for the wonderful uh, support and organization of this event uh, and uh, the ability for us here at the Free University of Berlin to develop our Ukrainian studies expertise and uh, develop new paths for, of cooperation uh, build up on existing ones and develop a new agenda for a new Ukraine. Uh, thank you very much again. I, I would like uh, to mention here most of the things have been mentioned by uh, Sofia. So please keep one chair distance between you. You don't need to wear masks when you are sitting, but if you want to ask a question uh, after each session, you, you should wear your mask and use this microphone over there. Uh, and um, um, together with Mihai Varga, uh, we would like to welcome you again here. Mihai is the deputy of the sociology group and me from the economics group of the Osteuropa Institute. And uh, we are very happy to welcome you in the premises of the Free University of Berlin and uh, open new paths and avenues for Ukrainian studies uh, globally. So thank you very much again for being here. And uh, I would like, uh, at this point, invite um, Mrs. Gabriele Germani um, uh, from the Federal Ministry of Education and Research. Mrs. Germani, thank you very much. The floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I love the Freie University. I studied here. It was a great time. Do you hear me well? Okay. So, dear guests, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hold a speech. I think it's around 15, 20 minutes so that you are 
uh, informed <laughs> about this. Um, well, first of all, I would like to thank, of course, the coordinators, Ms. Säumnich, for the invitation. And on behalf of the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, warmly greet all the participants of this important event. And dear Professor Grigoriadis, I thank you for the welcoming words. The Institute um, for East European Studies at the Freie Universität Berlin has been long on the forefront of Eastern European studies. Today, it stays committed to the research of the dynamics of the transformation process currently underway in Ukraine and other Eastern European countries. 30 years ago, Ukraine embarked on what became a rocky journey on parting with the Soviet past. The Ukrainians demonstrated an exceptional determination to stand up for European values and to profoundly transform the country's political, economic, and social order. This included, and still includes, substantial reforms to modernize Ukrainian science and higher education landscape. Germany has supporting Ukraine for years in its reforms and efforts in moving closer to Europe. The Federal Ministry for Education and Research for its parts has been providing advice and funding for the ongoing transformation process of the Ukrainian scientific system from the start. Today, I would like uh, to have a brief look on the quality of German-Ukrainian cooperation in the field of science and technology and how it has changed over the last few years. Um, I will concentrate on three points, the foundation of our cooperation, the present challenges and changes, and the potential of our future cooperation. The foundations were laid right after independence of Ukraine. Science and technology cooperation took center stage from the very beginning of the relationship between our two countries. Thus, only two years after Ukrainian independence, both countries signed a joint declaration about scientific technical cooperation in June 1993. Going back to the early 1990s, let's try to remember that new travel possibilities, the advancement of science and technology and the digitalization created a completely new framework for international cooperation. On the basis of our formal cooperation agreements and uh, from larger number of personal contacts, we could build an intensive and continuous dialogue between our two countries and have achieved a lot since then. In order to foster exchange of information and to better coordinate our strategies, we established a so-called joint German-Ukrainian Working Group of Science and Technology, which encompasses the most important actors from both countries and has met quite regularly since then. The positive dynamics uh, is, be uh, is being maintained despite the pandemic situation. In the spring of uh, 2021, the, we hosted such a working group meeting in Berlin in a virtual format. Together with our Ukrainian partner, the Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine, we have regularly funded German-Ukrainian projects through joint bilateral calls. The majority of these projects aimed at a promotion of mobility and networking between scientists from both countries. However, besides financing classic mobility schemes, we also succeeded to realize also some so-called structural projects that addressed quite diverse topics within the research system. Currently, we are funding 11 bilateral projects with a wide range of disciplines. We put in place several measures to accompany the reforms of the Ukrainian research system. As a result, German scientists were involved in the development of an evaluation model for the Institute of <coughs> the National Academy of Science of Ukraine, followed the example of the model of the Leibniz Association. Through expert advice and best 
practices exchange, German scientists and research organizations were involved in establishing new scientific institutions in Ukraine, like the National Council of Ukraine on Science and Technology Development and the National Research Foundation of Ukraine. We are very proud that much of what we so much value in Germany has served as a model for reforms in Ukrainian research system. The transparent and competi uh, competition-based research funding by the German Research uh, Foundation, DFG, the systematic consulting in the fields of science policy by German Council of Science and Humanities, Wissenschaftsrat, um, as well as the instrument of the regular evaluation of scientific institutes. Today, Ukraine plays a key role in European Union um, neighborhood policy. Ukrainian scientists successfully participate in the research framework programs of, the, ye, of uh, the EU. We continue to support the country in its efforts towards a deeper integration into the European research area. To this end, we fund projects that aim to prepare common proposals with Ukrainian scientists um, for ho uh, Horizon Europe calls. German-Ukrainian scientific relations have extraordinarily succeeded over the past five years. The financial involvement of the BMBF in joint projects has substantially increased. While in 2016 around 77,000 euros were spent on common activities, the overall funding amounted to nearly 2 million euros in 2020. However, it's not about money. What are the present challenges we are facing in our cooperation? Um, we need a new quality of our mutual cooperations. Besides project-based activities, we are increasingly supporting cooperation that involves long-term partnerships of universities and research institutions and addresses research infrastructures. Of most important our, no, our most important initiative is the establishment of German-Ukrainian course of excellence, which are modeled after the EU's highly successful Teaming for Excellence program. Through establishing German-Ukrainian research groups in Ukraine, we aim at strengthening Ukraine's attractiveness as a research location. Excellent Ukrainian scientists who are currently working outside the country are given the opportunity to set up and lead an internationally competitive working group in Ukraine together with a German research institution in order to carry out cutting edge research. The response to all to our call for proposal which was opened until April, April 2020 exceeded our expectations. We received a total of 38 formally eligible proposals, each which was reviewed by three German and two Ukrainian experts. Due to the high number of very well rated proposals, we have selected 12 instead of originally envisaged 10 projects for funding in the concept uh, phase. Many projects envisage the appointment of a returnee as a principal investigator. The thematic diversity of the projects ranges from the, human, uh, from the humanities and social sciences to agricultural, bio uh, biological and material sciences and to research, uh, research fields such as IT and medicine. Another flagship project aims um, at building up strong ties between um, German and Ukrainian universities. The German Academic Exchange Service, DAAD, implements the program called Support for the Internationalization of Ukrainian Higher Education Institutions, and this program intends to use the tools of digitization to foster German-Ukrainian cooperation. A crucial part of this program aims at training non-scientific employees of Ukrainian higher education institutes to become skilled 
administrators of internationalization at their home institutions. We will hear later about this project, I suppose. My third and last point concerns the potential of our future cooperation. One topic with huge potential for our further cooperation is, in our opinion, innovation development. Funding of innovation and related infrastructure continues to be an important issue in Germany. The policy of BMBF aims at strengthening the reciprocal transfer of ideas, knowledge and technology between companies, universities, non-university research institutions and other societal, uh, societal actors. actors. As part of its internationalization strategy, the federal government is committed to improving the framework conditions for innovation together with its international partners. With this regard, BMBF is glad to support the Ukrainian partners in reforming their research innovation landscape. In order to fully utilize uh, its research and innovation potential, Ukraine needs more modern infrastructure, which ensure the free flow of knowledge and innovation and help to connect science with industry. We are currently funding uh, a project called Academ City. Uh, the project examines the potential of establishing a technology park in Kiev, um, and it's conducted with the support of German experts from the management team of Berlin Adlershof, which is, a, as you probably know, a technology park in, uh, in Berlin, and scientists from Humboldt University. The success of the project will depend crucially on whether it succeeds in gaining support from relevant Ukrainian stakeholders. The signing of the Memorandum, Memorandum of Understanding of the Institutes of Academy of Science of Ukraine, which I was able to attend virtually in July, is a promising first step. Concentrating our efforts on more institutional cooperation does not mean that we are moving away from the well-proven instrument of project funding. We continue to closely work with our Ukrainian partners and prepare and implement joint bilateral calls. However, in the future there will be a shift from a broad thematic approach towards a more pointed approach. New thematic priorities that we want to include in our cooperation are, for example, research that addresses the thematic fields of the European Green Deal, health research focusing the corona pandemic, and research dealing with the brand new topic of green hydrogen. Also new in our bilateral cooperation will be the inclusion of the social science and humanities in our next call, which we plan for next year. Dear ladies and gentlemen, after all, it is you, the scientists from Germany and Ukraine, who bring our cooperation agreements to life by multitude of common projects. You have launched successful activities in various scientific fields and thus created a solid foundation for the task still ahead. Just one outstanding example is the German-Ukrainian Academic Society, one of the organizers of this conference today, the days of Ukraine in Berlin and Brandenburg. The German-Ukrainian Academic Society, founded five years ago, has been of tremendous value for the, uh, for the bilateral cooperation and serves as a coordination body for many activities within Germany. Last but not least, I would like to emphasize my strong belief that the fruitful cooperation between our two countries will continue to prove its worth in the future. I'm looking forward to inspiring presentations today and tomorrow, many impulses for future activities and further cooperations. Now, however, I will hand over to Mr. Erich Bistricker, who on behalf of the BMBF is supporting the research cooperation with our Ukrainian partners on site in Kiev. Thank you very much for your patience and your attention. 
And uh, thanks again for, uh, to the organizers and thanks to Mrs. Säumenich. Thank you. Please. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Erich Bistriker. I'm working in Ukraine as coordinator for German-Ukrainian research cooperation in Kiev on behalf of the BMBF, Division 212, cooperation with Eastern partnership countries, Russia and Central Asia. I'm also supported I'm also supported by TLR Project Trigger. My workspace in Ukraine is at TA International GmbH, GmbH, a service company of the German-Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce in Kiev. The main focuses of my work, you may see on the slide, they include Support of the BMBF and actors from the BMBF environment in accompanying of funding calls, events, and other measure within the framework of the federal government's action plan to support reform activities and stabilize Ukraine. For example, implementing support of the unilateral funding calls, establishing of German Ukrainian scores of excellence in Ukraine. After the official start of the project in the concept phase, there will be offered a workshop for the relevant target group on the following topics. Legal and administrative question in the context uh, of a project of technical assistance in Ukraine regarding visas, resident and work permits, income tax of German employers, accreditation of German implementing organization, Processing of payment transaction, accounting, personal costs for local employers, etc. Another topic will be about national R&D funding opportunities. Implementing support of the regular German-Ukrainian funding call for scientific and technological cooperation, which is being published every two years. The next call is expanded to be invited early next year. Implementing support of the regular meetings of the German-Ukrainian Working Group for scientific and technology cooperation. Um, last year, I also supported the communication between the DFG and the National Science Foundation of Ukraine for uh, COVID pandemic reasons, etc. The next focus of my work is consulting and information for German and Ukrainian and R&D and I actors, including SMS. The general consulting points are funding opportunities in the respective country, promotion of Germany as location for education and research, presentation of the R&D and I potential in the respective country, search for suitable R&D partner, to treat the tested matchmaking processes. Consulting on identifying and participating in relevant events. There is an increased need for consulting, especially when it comes to the implementing for funding calls 
for example, the funding cost that I mentioned or the funding call for green hydrogen cooperation with Ukraine, Central Asia and South Caucasus deadline was on June 2021. And other funding calls from various funding institutions that are relevant from German, Ukrainian, R&D and I cooperation. If necessary, consulting can be offered in the form of group or individual consulting. The next fo focus of my work is networking, maintaining of relationship with relevant actors from politics, administration, scientific, uh, science, research and economy, including Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine, is my contact to German-Ukraine Science and Technology Corporation. Scientific Committee of the National Council of Science and Technology, National Research Foundation of Ukraine, etc. All these also relevant to German institution. Last but not least, next focus of my work is providing information on science and innovation system in Ukraine. Ukraine is on the way to incessantly push uh, ahead with reform in the R&D era. It is therefore important to invite the BMBF as early as possible about the upcoming or ongoing reform processes in order to give impetus for cooperation at an early stage. The publication to the important state organs and institutions, parliaments, cabinet of ministers, national council for science and technology, ministry for education and science of Ukraine, national academies of science, etc., as well as civil society serve as services of information. This information is summarized in the form of report and messages. With my competition, I'm available to both German and Ukrainian interested parties from the R&D and I area. Please don't hesitate to contact me, even if your issue is outside of the above maintained priorities. Thank you for your attention. I think we have five minutes for questions uh, from the audience here. Uh, Mihai will coordinate that part. Um, dear everyone, can you hear me? Um, if you have any questions, you can come to the microphone. Please wear the mask and you can ask the question to any speaker. And we will also collect the questions from the chat. for your attention. Okay, then it is a great pleasure now to start uh, uh, the second session of the first part of the, the second uh, talk of the first session of the morning session of the conference. And I would like to welcome uh, Professor Jakubowski and Dr. Rodionova from Odessa National University. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, both of you, for being here. Uh, so um, we will start uh, with our presentation, and um, which involves the cooperation of the economics group um, uh, here in uh, between Berlin and uh, of the economics group of the Osteuropa Institute and the chair of international economic relations and at Odessa National Economic University through a series of various uh, programs. Um, and uh, we are going actually to present you what have we done uh, the last years and uh, some uh, perspectives for further cooperation. Uh, Serhii and Tatiana, thank you very much uh, for being here, for making the time from Odessa uh, to be at our event. So, um, um, so the sequence of the presentations is set. 
uh, I think that um, um, we need to do, so each speaker must stand and then you will exchange places after each part is uh, done. So, uh, we need to have uh, the distance. We need, okay, I mean, the, the, uh, uh, yes, I think. So we, we cannot sit next to each other for, um, so. Yes, Oliver, you may want to start. Hello. Hey. Um, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests and colleagues, my name is Oliver Wach, and I'm a doctoral candidate and research fellow with Professor Theo Harris Gregoriades in the Department of Economics at the Institute for East European Studies. I'm very happy to be here today and at my first ever presence event since I started working during the uh, corona pandemic, so I'm very excited. Uh, today I have the pleasure to introduce you into the session Berlin Odessa Dialogue in Economics, Five Years of Successful Cooperation. Uh, since the foundation of our institute 70 years ago, the Osteuropa Institute places emphasis of deepening cooperation with universities in Eastern Europe. I'm very familiar with this topic since for an exhibition about our 70 years celebration this year, I was participating in the research about the institution internationalization at our institute, an exhibition that will start in November to make some advertisement here. Um, that's also why I'm very excited to be here today and talk about contemporary cooperations. In order to establish partnerships, FU Berlin participates in various exchange programs, as these, are of, as these are of great importance for bilateral research and teaching. The permanent development of the international profile is one of our strategic directions at the Institute and the way to enrich international partnerships. This includes, among others, the partnership agreement between FU Berlin and the National II Metchnikov University Odessa, which covers four topics of cooperation, student and academic exchange, joint research projects, conferences, and teaching programs. Initiated with scholar exchanges in 2017, 2019, both universities applied for the Leonhard Euler program by the DRD. The program supports doctoral and graduate students from East European countries, including Ukraine. FU Berlin is constantly striving for new cooperation opportunities in the post-Soviet space, and the Leonhard Euler program is a useful funding instrument for establishing and developing partnerships with the universities in Eastern Europe. As you're also experiencing in this conference today, in the academic year 2020-2021, the project had to be adopted in the view of the still ongoing corona pandem pandemic. Regrettably, the research visits of the students and researchers to Berlin was cancelled. However, with students, the students were able to finish their master thesis using online meetings with both corporations and academic advisors from both partner universities. Now I'm very glad to introduce you to the three speakers, as already shortly happened, um, who are the cornerstones of this cooperation. The ONU side from Odessa is represented by the Department of World Economy and International Economics via Professor Sergei Jakubowski, head of the department, and Tatiana Radionova, associate professor of the department. The Berlin side is being represented by Professor Theo Haas Grigoriades, professor of economics and associate director of the institute. Uh, who is the leader of the Berlin side of the cooperation. Now I'm very happy to give you, to give the word to the three speakers and hear about the successful last five years. Thank you. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Uh, we are very happy to be here and so thank you very much for inviting us. It's a big honor for us to take part in such kind of event to present here uh, our uh, results of our cooperation between Odessa National University and uh, Free University of Berlin. Uh, so uh, first of all, let me uh, tell a few words about uh, my native city, Odessa. Unfortunately, I'm not German, so I don't know how to use this technique here. In Odessa, we, by hand, do everything, but it doesn't work here. It's more complicated. So, you know the name of your presentation? No, uh, do you need to... Oh, you mean, you need to... Yes, this is... That's it. That is, yes. You have just removed... Yes, it. yes, so... Okay. Thank you. So uh, let me uh, tell you a few words, uh, uh, first of all, about Odessa, because it's my native city, and uh, Odessa 
and the Odessa National University is uh, located uh, in Odessa. So Odessa is uh, one of the biggest uh, cities of Ukraine, and um, uh, it's uh, a major tourism uh, center, a seaport, and um, transport hub located uh, in the uh, southwest uh, of uh, Ukraine and uh, on the uh, western uh, northern shore of the Black Sea. Odessa is a uh, Ukrainian city, of course it's a Ukrainian city, but uh, it has some differences from uh, other cities. Uh, mm, what are the differences? Uh, first of all, uh, there are many, uh, many uh, people from uh, many nations, nationalities, ethnic, ethnic and cultural groups have been living uh, in Odessa um, for centuries. Uh, that's why, for example, uh, the um, architecture of Odessa is similar to, is more similar to <coughs> Mediterranean uh, French or Italian cities than to other, uh, Odessa, uh, to other Ukrainian uh, cities. Um, uh, so uh, among the uh, most popular and the most successful mayors of Odessa, uh, are uh, Duke de, uh, Duke, uh, de Richelieu. Uh, he was a relative of the Cardinal Richelieu and um, he was born in France. He worked as a mayor in Odessa and then uh, when he went back to France, uh, he became um, the Prime Minister uh, of France. Uh, another very uh, famous uh, mayor uh, was Josip um, uh, Diribas, uh, whose parents were from Spain. He born in Italy and then uh, went to, to Odessa and was very successful mayor. Another one is uh, Grigory Marazli, uh, whose father was from um, uh, Greece, mother from uh, France, but, and, but he was born in, uh, in Odessa and uh, he was also uh, very famous and he did a lot for Odessa. Uh, that's why uh, there are many uh, places in Odessa that are associated with uh, European uh, names. Uh, the famous uh, place is Greek place. We have also Greek street, uh, Greek boulevard. Um, uh, Diribasovska street is a famous street in Odessa. We have Italian uh, street, Italian uh, boulevard, uh, but also Turkish, uh, Turkish, Turkish park. So, uh, uh, that's why we, we, uh, I can say that uh, Odessa is Ukrainian and European city. But I think that uh, 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 representatives of all Ukrainian cities who, who are here can uh, tell uh, the same about their cities that uh, we are Ukrainians, but also we live in European cities in Ukraine. Uh, so, um, here you can uh, see the beautiful uh, photos of Ukraine. Uh, if you want uh, to have only, uh, not only uh, uh, good uh, scientific research to, 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 to conduct in, in, in Odessa or to take part in academic program, but you can also uh, visit uh, and uh, Odessa uh, see and have a good time there. Uh, speaking about Odessa National <coughs> University, uh, it's one of the um, oldest uh, in Ukraine. Uh, it was founded uh, in 1865, and uh, a few years ago we had uh, 15,000 students, and uh, 1,000 uh, students of them were foreigners. Uh, of course, uh, during the last two years, it was the decline in, in foreign students, especially last year when, due to the pandemic, restriction, uh, it was impossible to foreigners, uh, it was very big problem to, to enter Ukraine as other European countries, but uh, uh, we didn't uh, lose in the number of students because uh, we got uh, many good uh, Ukrainian students who planned to continue their education in the European Union, by, but due to this pandemic restriction, they had to stay in Ukraine and in Odessa. Uh, so, uh, let me uh, start uh, 
speaking about uh, time timeline of cooperation with uh, Free University of Berlin. It was uh, called February 2016 when uh, I got uh, a mail from uh, um, uh, Honorary Consulate of Germany in Odessa and uh, he wrote that uh, there is uh, one professor from Germany, Professor Tiahari Gagliadis, who, who is uh, looking for for, for academicians who are ready to, 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 to start new programs. And uh, we got acquainted to the internet. We were preparing uh, the summer school in uh, Odessa uh, in summer of uh, 2016. This project was not successful, but uh, since that event, uh, uh, all other, uh, almost all of other projects were successful. So Professor uh, Griardiadis, he visited the uh, first uh, time Odessa National University in 2017. Then from 2018, uh, uh, Erasmus exchanges uh, between professors, faculty, uh, students uh, were uh, started and uh, I think that five uh, faculty members of Odessa National University at least two students uh, visited the uh, um, uh, University of Berlin. Uh, several times Professor Giliadis uh, uh, visited Odessa, uh, made very interesting presentation as for faculty members, as for, uh, for students. Uh, and uh, we, we plan that our cooperation uh, will be continued, so uh, this June, uh, this National University um, has applied for Jean Monnet project, uh, success and shortcomings of, uh, of monetary policy of the European Union, lessons for Ukraine, and uh, uh, there are uh, four authors of this, uh, of this project. Uh, three of them, uh, Galina Alexievska, Tatiana Rodion, and me, uh, visited several times uh, the University of Berlin and got uh, good experience, I hope, in the preparation of the project. And the head of our group uh, is Professor Gregoriadis. So uh, I see here Svetlana Shitikova, uh, who has big influence uh, on the decision in the European Union. So maybe, <laughs> maybe she will help us to realize uh, another, another good uh, project. Uh, here you can uh, see uh, the photos of uh, happy people from uh, Odessa who got uh, a chance to, to, to be here in the University of Berlin in the past. Um, and Professor Gigadis, of course, in the middle of, the, of this group of happy people. So as I told you, uh, there were several visits of, uh, of professors from the uh, University of Berlin to Odessa, and among these two professors, Julia Zimmermann uh, made very interesting presentation for students, for PhD students and for uh, master students about the influence of sport events on, uh, on the development of countries. So one of... Uh, of student uh, who was a master student, uh, now he's a PhD student, he, he uh, liked very much the topic of research and uh, now he's doing his research in this field, uh, the influence of sports events of, on, the develop, on social economic development of countries. So uh, from my point of view, uh, this, our cooperation was very, very, very uh, successful. We have a uh, very interesting experience when one of, uh, this, of uh, my students from Free University of Berlin, Alia Paix, visited uh, Odessa National University in spring semester 2020. It was a very exciting visit because uh, she came in the February of 2020 when only people in China knew about uh, this terrible uh, disease. And then everything was closed in Europe in a month, and uh, Alia was also closed in the flat in Odessa, but uh, she continued to do her uh, MA research. She successfully defended her uh, MA dissertation 
uh, in Berlin. So uh, her advisor was Professor Brigariadis. Uh, well, I think that uh, uh, my colleague Tatiana Radionova uh, will continue because uh, she is one of the co-author of uh, applications for earlier uh, cooperation uh, for earlier project, and uh, she will be able to to tell you more about this project. Thank you very much. Thank Professor you for your attention. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> After the presentation is over, you can ask. Yes. Uh, good morning, liebe Damen und Herren. Uh, thank you for passing on uh, the word to me. I will uh, continue uh, the presentation uh, highlighting uh, our cooperation. Uh, with the Free University of Berlin, uh, which I coordinate at the Department of World Economy at uh, Mechnikov University, namely the uh, DAD uh, Leonard Euler uh, Scholarship Program. Uh, this program is supported by the Deutsche Akademische Austauschdienst uh, DAD, and uh, it's, uh, it promotes the joint supervision of the research uh, projects by uh, master and PhD students at their last year uh, of study uh, at the master or PhD program. Uh, and uh, they are jointly supervised by professors from uh, home university and German university. Uh, and the region uh, uh, covered by this program is uh, Eastern and Southeastern Europe, um, South Caucasus and Central Asia. So uh, the fields uh, of studies which are covered by the program are uh, natural sciences, mathematics especially, as Leonard Euler was a mathematician, but also social sciences, including economics. And what is uh, uh, supported by the program, uh, the students receive monthly scholarships while they are based uh, at their home universities. Uh, up to nine months uh, they can receive such uh, scholarships. Uh, and also uh, the important, uh, the most important part is the study visit to the German, German partner university. Uh, from one month to up to three months students uh, can spend at the German university. Uh, also, what is covered by the program is the uh, visits, uh, visit by uh, Ukrainian supervisor to, uh, to the partner German university and uh, the vice versa, the uh, coordinator from the German side uh, visits um, us, uh, our department in Ukraine. Uh, personally, I received similar scholarship from the Adev when I was a, a PhD student. At that time, it was called um, Sandwich Scholarship Program, a funny name, but uh, basically meaning the same, that uh, there was a joint supervision uh, by um, uh, advised by scientific advisor in Ukraine and in uh, Germany, uh, but uh, what was the difference? The difference that um, main activity was uh, basically in uh, Germany, so I spent one academic year in uh, uh, Kiel Institute for the World Economy in uh, Kiel, Schleswig-Holstein. But then afterwards I returned back to Ukraine and defended my dissertation uh, in Ukraine, so that was the program about, but now uh, here, the main aspect in the Dea de Euler, uh, Leonard Euler program is the, um, to help students finalize their uh, thesis, either master or PhD thesis. So, how do I scroll? <laughs> we actually had a PowerPoint slide. I don't know why it's in PDF here. It's very inconvenient. Uh, could you please show me how to scroll down? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Here, okay. Sorry. Uh, so, our first successful application for 
uh, funding was in uh, 2019. Uh, application deadline is usually in January, and we got the news uh, that uh, the project was approved in uh, May. Uh, so our um, four MA students uh, in international econ specializing in international economics and one uh, PhD student were selected. Uh, to participate in the program. Um, the criteria to select the students uh, are, of course, academic excellence, uh, the track of uh, student publications, uh, the participation at the student conferences. So these are the best out of the best. Uh, and um, the students were receiving the scholarship uh, during the uh, fall semester in uh, 2019. And then in November, they came for one month uh, to uh, finalize their MA thesis uh, in, uh, at the Free University of Berlin with the help of consultation from Professor uh, Grigoriadis. And in the end, it was, uh, uh, so we had a, a presentation uh, roundtable uh, where we visited as well uh, with Professor Jakubowski, uh, and the students received useful feedback how to improve uh, their thesis. And then uh, it all followed by successful in my thesis uh, defense at our university uh, in front of the state uh, examination committee. Uh, the students presented what they uh, have done uh, while their uh, study visit to Berlin. Uh, and uh, one of the requirements which we have uh, for our students, um, master students, is that they uh, need to publish their research in Ukrainian uh, journals. They need to have two uh, articles before uh, at, at the stage of their uh, defense, the papers must be uh, submitted to, for publication. Uh, so uh, there is another um, advantage of the program, uh, Leonard Euler, because it also supports uh, such uh, expenses for publication in the journal. It covers it. Um, so yeah, the students successfully defended their thesis and afterwards graduated uh, in January 2020, uh, getting the certificates uh, from the Free University of Berlin that they were participants uh, of uh, such uh, Leonard Ole program that they were scholarship holders. Uh, into 2020-21 academic year, we had to uh, follow the conditions uh, which uh, COVID pandemic brought to us. So we uh, switched uh, totally online and our uh, second round of um, Euler scholarship holders, uh, they, uh, yeah, the, the all, all activities were moved totally online. So no, uh, there was no possibility to visit Berlin for them, the free university to, but uh, they got access to uh, online library uh, and uh, they were consulting online with professors from the Institute of East European Studies here at the Free University of Berlin. Uh, the PhD student which was supported um, uh, in previous, in the first round, uh, she spent a like, couple of months in Berlin as well, and then uh, after some time she finalized her PhD uh, thesis and defended it successfully, uh, getting a PhD degree. Uh, the defense was also online because it was already in 2020. Um, but uh, she also uh, was one of the successful participants of the Euler project. Uh, another uh, direction of cooperation which uh, we have with the Free University of Berlin is the, uh, was um, the help uh, during the accreditation of our department. Uh, previous semester, and, and it still continues nowadays, uh, those Ukrainian colleagues uh, who had to go through this process of accredi accreditation by National Agency of Higher Education Quality Assurance, so-called NAZIAVO, uh, probably uh, should know how, how painful this process is. So we invited Professor Grigoriadis to be our stakeholder, and he, um, he was uh, 
participating uh, in the online meeting with these Nazava members, uh, supporting us um, in this uh, not easy <laughs> stage uh, our department was going through, uh, the accreditation of the PhD program. Uh, but thanks to his support, we are almost done, almost there, uh, accredited. <laughs> so this is uh, another direction which, uh, which is really, really helpful. Uh, also, uh, I was invited uh, to uh, the research seminar for master students uh, at the Free University of Berlin at the master program, the East European Studies Institute. Uh, the uh, seminar uh, about uh, crisis uh, uh, and challenges. So I had a presentation uh, about the Ukrainian crisis and its aftermath, uh, but it was also online because it was in 2020 in the fall semester. Um, so now we are in the middle of the third uh, Dia de Euler project. Uh, in uh, July, uh, Professor Grigoriadis brought us uh, great news that we were again supported by Dia Dea, and we had a meeting with the scholarship holders this year, uh, who will be coming hopefully to Berlin in November. Uh, there are three master students and one PhD student. And during the meeting in Odessa, we discussed uh, with Professor uh, Grigoriadis the plans for work uh, during this semester. Um, yeah, and basically, that was my part. Thank you for your attention. Um, <coughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you very much uh, uh, to Professor Jakubowski and Dr. Odionova, uh, dear colleagues, for presenting uh, what we have achieved in uh, German-Ukrainian cooperation in the area of economics between Berlin and Odessa. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, the common areas of research uh, that we have uh, initiated these uh, five years. Um, and, of course, a very important aspect is an area that I'm also working on, is comparative monetary policy, um, uh, where we're essentially, uh, we have explored jointly, uh, this has also been a, a part of my own research on the uh, spillover effects of ECB uh, monetary policy in the East European economies. So uh, I have uh, uh, produced some research on the unconventional policy of the ECB uh, during the a financial crisis here in Europe. Uh, and the latest work has been on the presence of spillover effect, on whether there were spillover effects from the ECB's unconventional uh, monetary policy and these extra liquidity measures taken by the board of the ECB to support uh, um, uh, the problematic European economies. And what was the effect of this for uh, the East European periphery? And this is also an area that interests a lot, uh, the chair uh, of World Economy and International Economic Relations at Odessa National University. Uh, Halina Alexeyevska, one PhD student and a very prominent young scientist right now in the, in the chair, has defended her thesis on that, also with my support. And uh, we are planning to expand on this area as well, given the central role that the Ukrainian National Bank is playing in the reform and development of the economy in Ukraine. Um, and the second part, this is so maritime trade and international development is a, a new area for me, but I'm also very happy to develop um, interests and expertise in that area as well, jointly with the colleagues uh, of the World Economy Group at uh, Odessa National University, uh, where we're essentially exploring the relationship between uh, bulk trade and uh, stock uh, market capitalization of leading companies involved in maritime business. So essentially we're using the advantage of Odessa as a port city to understand better uh, business development. So uh, thank you very much. I hope uh, you um, enjoyed our uh, joint presentation, our group presentation, and we are all of us available for questions here live but also on the chat. Thank you very much.
Thank you, uh, Professor Grigoriadis, as well as our colleagues um, and from Odessa. And I would like to have a question, if I may, at the first one. Um, you were mentioning uh, this, that you have a joint supervision on some master and PhD programs. I found it very nice. And my, my question would be if you are planning to make a joint uh, program for masters and for PhDs so that it can obtain a double degree. Uh, I mean that they obtain the diploma from the Odessa University as well as from Fry University. If you have this in mind, if uh, you like the idea, if it could be your future goal. That's the first question. And the second question, um, do you have a plan how you will develop this collaboration in the next five years? What will be the first uh, projects? Maybe you have something in mind. Maybe you already applied for some scholarship. Would be nice to know a bit more. So please, Professor Grigoriadis or our um, uh, participants from Odessa, Dr. Radiono and Professor Kubowski, one of you, please answer. We'll be happy to hear. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Sofia. This is a very relevant question as we have already started discussions about this topic. Um, so um, we have two, um, uh, two basic plans. I mean, I, I totally agree with you that joint supervision of uh, Masters and PhD students has been a very important part, and of course this is the whole point of the Euler program for master's students and for PhD students, uh, but we want to expand. And of course, uh, we have taken two measures in that direction. One has been the parallel submission of uh, Jean Monnet chairs for European integration. Uh, so from my part, I have applied for Jean Monnet chair uh, on the external economic relations of the European Union with focus on the Eastern Partnership countries. And of course, Ukraine is very prominent because we have uh, coordinated, we have mentioned each other in our respective application and Professor Yakubovsky has also submitted a similar application at the same time from the Ukrainian side. Um, in addition to that, we are very seriously considering to uh, develop um, a certificate program in, um, uh, in German-Ukrainian studies uh, at Odessa, uh, possibly jointly with uh, Shevchenko University, but these are very preliminary discussions at this point. Essentially, we want to uh, increase uh, uh, German and European expertise on uh, economics and social sciences among Ukrainian students. Um, and, of course, um, we are considering, uh, we're making very serious thoughts and plans in that direction. So, um, if Professor Yakubovsky or Dr. Odionova would like to add something, please, you can take, uh, you can take the floor. Um, if you want to add something on our future plan. Yeah, exactly, so. I've got two questions, one to Professor Grigoriadis, another to Dr. Radionova. The first question is to Professor Grigoriadis. You briefly mentioned the topics uh, of your common research, but can you give some explicit example for me to feel uh, uh, what would be uh, uh, impossible without the students coming to Ukraine? What the students coming from Germany to Ukraine, what do they get? And the second question to Dr. Radionova, uh, you mentioned that students are required to have two publications in Ukrainian journals. I wanted to ask, uh, does that or does that not undermine the visibility of that research as compared to publishing in international journals? What is your view on that and why the decision is like this? Um. Thank you very much. Um, so obviously, I mean, um, a very important um, research area for economics interested students coming to Ukraine would be to uh, study um, uh, Ukrainian European monetary relations, essentially to identify channels through which European monetary policy influences Ukrainian development and also uh, to um, model Ukrainian monetary policy itself under conditions of conflict. I think these are very interesting aspects of research for students. Uh, in addition to that, uh, if one wants to take into account the, um, uh, the uh, 
strategic advantage of Odessa would be, of course, to, um, uh, to focus on maritime economics and uh, understand how global maritime companies um, profit, make profits and how they develop their networks. Thank you for your question. Uh, so as I uh, mentioned, uh, there is this requirement that uh, our master students uh, ha have to fulfill uh, the minimum of two publications in the uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, specialized uh, journals but this is a minimum requirement. Uh, and uh, also, I didn't mention that one of the articles uh, needs to be in English. That's a requirement for, for this. Uh, our uh, students specialize in international economics. They also study two foreign languages, usually uh, English and then uh, either German or uh, French or Spanish. So they also get this uh, qualification of interpreter. Uh, so uh, coming back to the journals, uh, as one of the article needs to be in English, uh, and usually Ukrainian journals are available online and uh, that's not an issue uh, for finding uh, for the visibility of this research. But as this is the minimum requirement, some of our students uh, get uh, their publications in Scopus Index journals as well, as we have cooperation with some uh, European uh, indexed journals uh, it's called Transition uh, Studies Review and Global uh, Policy and Governance uh, Journal. So some uh, of the brightest students, uh, most successful after their um, study visit to, to Free University of Berlin, they finalize their research and we help them publish in uh, this Scopus Index journals as well. Not all of them, of course, but uh, at least one, two students do that. So thank you for your question. So, do we have any more questions? No, there, there's anything. No, I just, so I would also have a one question. So, it seemed that um, the initiative for this cooperation came from the FU side, but generally how easy is it for the Ukrainian side to initiate such, co such uh, cooperations? So, for instance, a university in Ukraine uh, finding out about the OILA program and then what can happen? I mean, what, what, do so you know it, such cases? Yes, so uh, our, um, uh, our uh, Abteil Fear here at the Free University, and I would like to take the opportunity to also help Abteil Fear uh, of the Presidium of the Free University of Berlin for their tremendous support. Um, um, so it's, it has a very, I mean, we always make sure to have um, Erasmus funds that allow uh, Ukrainian partners to come to come to us and make an agreement. Uh, so this um, does not happen. Uh, it can happen decentralized in a decentralized fashion to us, to the Austro Europa Institute. But it also happens through um, uh, the Erasmus World Program, uh, where basically Ukrainian colleagues, uh, young scholars, can uh, ask whether a partner in their own field of specialization can be found. And then the Erasmus World Office, the Erasmus Plus World Office is contacting uh, people, uh, scientists at the Free University of Berlin that share a similar expertise. So um, I think in that aspect, uh, the initiation of the Ukrainian side is very much facilitated through the Erasmus, the Erasmus Plus World Office of our university. Okay, so which addresses scholars. So first scholars get in touch via Erasmus Plus, they network and then they see whether they can take this, this Yes, forward. exactly. And also sometimes scholars uh, recommend their students uh, and if uh, the student uh, appears to be promising, then we invite for a semester scholarship through again Erasmus Plus World. Yes? Uh, can you, can you, ah. Or a bit I will speak a little bit loud. No, because the, the, the live streaming participants will not hear you. Okay. 
so we cannot we cannot move the microphone for health reasons. Yes, of course. Yes, speak, and then Sophia will repeat your question in the microphone. Okay. Uh, the question was, once again, that I repeat, how do you encourage Ukrainian, uh, the students to come to Ukraine and if they have to learn Ukrainian language, if those, uh, from what I understood, international students coming to Ukraine? Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, all our partner universities have uh, Ukrainian language programs for international students, and I think this is also one of the criteria that we select uh, our partners. Um, I think that it's a self-selection process. People wanting to do research on Ukraine essentially are also interested automatically in the language. So um, it has never been uh, difficult to find international students to go to Ukraine. I have to be honest about it. So uh, Ukraine is a very uh, promising destination for uh, researchers interested in Eastern Europe, given its centrality and significance right now. And um, so I think that uh, this is a, a very much positively growing trend. We also have one question from the chat, or let's say it's the first offer, um, collaboration offer, from Yuri Tashchev. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. Uh, he is from the Institute of Renew Renewable Energy of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine. And he's saying that he's really glad to take part in this conference and looks forward to cooperation in the field of research in the direction transition to the hydrogen economy in Germany and Ukraine. Yes, yes, Yuri Tasev, Dr. Tasev, he is a graduate of uh, Odessa National Economics University and he was uh, here as an Euler scholar uh, in 2015. Okay. Um, we're, we're greeting Yuri for his uh, remark. And <laughs> Yuri, please uh, send us your ideas to the Ukraine Days email and we will send them, forward them to Professor Grigoriadis. Thank you for the question. Sophia, then we are having now the, co the coffee break, right? So thank you very much for the first part of Info Session 1, and we will come back uh, in 15 minutes? Half an hour. Half an hour. Thank you.